Hi, I'm Lexington Times web editor Paul Oliva. I'm here with David Royce. David Royce is a local activist and advocate for drug treatment. David, thanks for coming on today. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing good today. I appreciate you doing this for us. Absolutely, sir. Um, so my first question uh, is just about you, your background, and uh, what got you into this line of work? Okay, well, I'm a Vietnam veteran. Uh, I've been uh, experienced a drug war for the last 50 years uh, and watched it just destroy this country's family fabric and, uh, and watched uh, many loved ones die of a drug overdose. And for the last 40 years, I've been calling for an end to the drug war, and I've been calling for safe medical treatment for our living addicted so they don't die from the poison off the streets of Kentucky and America. And uh, so you said poison uh, there at the end. Uh, can you kind of make a distinction between the drugs that were around maybe back in the 60s or 70s and yeah. the drugs around today? Well, back back in the 60s, I come home from Vietnam like 300,000 other Vietnam veterans addicted to narcotics, uh, heroin, salad, morphine, whatever we could, we could get to ease the trauma of the war we used. The military gave it to us in Vietnam. We all came home. We had a drug problem. And... Um, Many of them died. I saw a lot of old guys die then. But the fact is, if we have safe treatment, they will not die. Okay. And um, I, you've talked to me a lot about uh, your treatment solutions. Uh, what specific actions are you advocating for? Okay, here's what we're advocating for. Uh, for all those people out there that cannot make a rational decision to quit because they've got the disease, also known as drug addiction, they can't make a decision to quit. So if they can't make a decision to quit, we need to make safe medication available to them every day on a daily basis, twice a day if they need it, twice a day to save their lives so they don't die from the poison. All the infrastructure's already set up. Uh, all the EMT stations that waste millions of dollars trying to go out and save people's lives after they've OD'd, but could, could become the treatment centers and save save uh, the trauma on the EMT workers and save many lives because nobody's got an OD if they've got safe medication. They'll go in every day and get it. They'll go home at night and they'll come back the next day and get it again, just like a uh, my wife was on methadone for 49, well, not 49, over 40 years. She was on methadone every day, took it every morning with her coffee, and functioned fine. I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with a drug addict if they've got safe medication. They can do great things. Uh, we had a judge here in Fayette County, Judge Mitchell Me. He come back from World War II addicted to morphine. And it took him 15 years of being addicted. Then he went to law school and become the best judge that county's ever seen. So we can make a difference and we can change their lives and help them change their lives if they're alive. If we treat them today, they'll live to see another day. And someday they may make a decision to quit. If they do make that decision to quit, that'd be great. If not, I don't care if they stay addicted their whole lives. At least they'll be alive. We can interact with them and we can become part of their lives and they can be part of our lives and they won't die like my son did two years ago on fentanyl. And if he had, had been able to go get his dose at the treatment center, he wouldn't have died. So um, you mentioned stigma around this type of treatment. What other factors do you see keeping uh people, uh, you know, out in active addiction? Well, the, the stigma attached to drug addiction has it, got to be, we've got to overlook that. Everybody thinks the drug war was a great idea. It wasn't a good idea. We need to make, uh, make people realize that it's okay to be a drug addict. 
if you made a bad decision and put the needle in your arm, you made that decision. I had a Commonwealth attorney here in town, uh, Ray Larson. He was Commonwealth attorney for 40 years. He told me, he said, well, David, drug addicts ain't going to quit until they're ready or dead. I said, well, Ray, if you know that, then you know we should be treating We because they cannot make a rational decision that the drugs are taking over their brain and they can't make the decision to quit. So it's our job as, as uh, humanitarians, Christians, uh, uh, to treat them, to, to make their decision to say, hey, it's okay to treat them every day. We can't afford to lose another 100,000 again this year. We can't afford to lose one more child. So... Um... Can you talk about some of the the numbers, uh, you know, the deaths associated with these deadly drugs that are that could be prevented uh, if if more safer options were made? Available? Oh yes, uh, if we if we did what all the civilized countries in the world do, uh, like uh, Amsterdam, Holland, they reported only losing eleven people per million to drug addiction, to drug overdoses, and. Kentucky is reporting 337 per million because we don't treat them. If we treat them, we could save 95% of them's lives. Possibly all of them if we could reach them all. Yeah. Um, I, I think I speak for everybody in, in the Lexington community that everybody knows somebody who's died of a drug overdose. It's um, exceedingly commonplace here. Exactly, exactly. It's uh, everybody admits what the problem is. Everybody knows we can't afford to lose anybody else. I went to a fundraiser the other day with 60 Democrats who run for office and some of them hold an office. And a show of hands, all 60 of them agreed that it's past time to start treating our sick drug addicts. But at the same time, not one of them is willing to write the bill yet, calling for it, and to call on the governor to hold a special session today and address this problem because when we look each other in the eye, Democrat or Republican, we got to realize this is not a partisan issue. This is why. So you brought some quilts uh, that you wanted to talk about, unless you had more uh, more to weigh in on uh, here. Well, uh, mainly I just, I, I'm, I'm trying to convince all of the elected officials in Kentucky to go to get on board with this because only they have a say. In Kentucky, we cannot vote. My vote, your vote, doesn't have nothing to do with what happens to the laws in Kentucky. Only elected officials make the laws. So we got to convince them that it's time. So you pointed something interesting out to me on Sunday. You pointed out that we don't have uh, a mechanism to pass a law by a citizen referendum here in Kentucky. Uh, right, that's because we're Commonwealth Explain state. that. Well, in a Commonwealth state, only elected officials have the right to vote mm -hmm. on the laws that can be passed. Yeah, so elected, the, the state legislature, they can pass an act calling for a constitutional amendment right. that the people then vote on, but the people have no mechanism to actually bring forward. Exactly. We, like we can't introduce anything. Yeah. Only only elected officials can, can introduce And that's bill. one of the things that's keeping this from that's what taking effect. That's what keeping effect. We yeah. need that's, I've got several legislators said they're going to be working on it. Reggie Thomas, I gave him a Stop the Drug War flag over three years ago, a quilted flag I made. And he told me he's, he's going to be working on it. And Cheryl Lynn Stevenson and all the Repub all the Democrats I know agree that it's time to do it. And and but we've got to get one of them to write the bill, and then we've got to get somebody in the Senate to to introduce it. Yeah. And so we've got to convince a Republican to introduce this bill that we're calling for. So. You mentioned that you attended a Democratic fundraiser. Uh, but, you know, this is a nonpartisan blog, so I don't like to delve into right. partisanship too much. But I wanted to talk about um, 
or hear from you about what kind of uh, what the view is on the other side of the aisle um, in, in regards to supporting this measure. Well, uh, all the Democrats I know are calling for it. Uh, several Republicans I've approached; they know they know the, the they know what the problem is, but none of them have the gumption to stand up and 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 support it. For some reason, I don't know why. Yeah. So, I guess one other thing that I would ask you about um, as sort of a counterpoint is I know that some people in the the twelve step recovery community, if you're taking uh, Suboxone or Methadone or what have you, they won't view that as true sobriety. How would you respond to those who, who well, say such should things? everybody that's in uh, AA or uh, Narcon or Narcotics Narcotics Anonymous. Yeah. Uh, I applaud you all for for uh, doing what you do and 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 uh, that your religion is helping you uh, deal with this problem. And it, it, my religion helped me deal with it, for God's sake. So. Uh, but for the people that are out there that are lost and, and have lost faith in religion, for one reason or another, be it childhood trauma or, or rape or incest or, or war or whatever, for those that can't quit, those are the ones we want to treat. We want to help them. Okay. Um, anything else to say before we uh, show your quilts? No, I'd like to share these quilts with everybody. So, uh, here in this one quilt, uh, I'm going to point out it's a beautiful quilt. It's just absolutely beautiful. My wife and I picked out these fabrics, and they're all cotton. But anyway, she was a master quilter, and she made all these little squares, which are perfect. Every little square is perfect. Well, after she died, I finally put it together and I didn't have enough uh, squares. I was one short, so I dug through the quilt box and I found enough to make one square that I needed to finish the quilt. And as you can see, not one thing on this square is any good. It's not perfect. It's beautiful, but it's not perfect. Not one point matches, not one. But, uh, the irony in that is, is that not all of our people are perfect. Our drug addicts are not perfect. They need help, and we need to give it to them. And then on the back, this quilt's dedicated to all of our addicts. And it's in memory of them that I put this together. And it's a healing quilt. And every time I run into somebody, no matter where I'm at, they want to sign the, the best memory of their loved ones that's dead from the family. And even today, the little girl behind us signed the back of the quilt with her favorite memory of her friend that died from drug overdose. So if anybody wants to sign this quilt, we're going to have to try to get it set up somewhere where they can sign the names and the memories other best friend that died. Where have you uh, tried to get it set up before? Well, I set it up everywhere I go. Uh, I was going to try to have it put it in the uh, rotunda over in Frankfurt, but I haven't been able to do that yet. But Saturday, I'm going to a fundraiser where the lieutenant governor is going to be. And uh, well, actually, it's a picnic over in Paris. And anybody wants to come to the picnic over in Paris, it's at the park there in Paris. Democratic picnic. You Republicans are allowed to come too, of course. <laughs> anyway, Jackie Coleman's going to be there, and I'm going to try to run this by her again to see what she can help us do. Did you have one more to show, sir? Oh, yes, I do. I've got one more quilt I'm going to show. And uh, this quilt, I'm, I'm not. This isn't as good as the other one. I'm not finished with it yet. But I'm working on it. You're not a master quilter yourself? Uh, I'm not a master quilter, but I can sew. So this is a giant SOS. It's a giant SOS. 
And this is a message. Save our sick. And it's something we can do. I'm not giving up. We can save our sick people. If we treat them today, they won't die tonight. And they'll be here tomorrow. And we can enjoy their company for years to come. And one day, one day if they're alive, they may become the best person that ever walked the face of this earth. If they're allowed to be treated and healed. David Royce, everybody. Thank you for coming on. Today, Thank sir. you, guys.